Good morning, people of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A welcome to worship this day. We're pleased that you have gathered with us either in person or we'll be viewing online later. God is always present with us. And before we join our voices together this day, let us just take a moment to close our eyes, to gently breathe in, to breathe out, preparing our hearts for the Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us. We join our voices together in our opening words of faith found in your bulletin. From Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. He inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord who protects me when I am brought low. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with me. For you have delivered my soul, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Praise the Lord. God, I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we place the words of confession on our lips and receive the Lord's forgiveness. We come to worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, let us come now into worship, confessing our sin in the presence of God and of one another so that we might hear God's word for our lives and seek to do God's will. Amen. Reconciling God, you have called us to be your presence in the world, and you desire that we should welcome others and offer the life and joy of Christ to all those we encounter. Yet too often we honor you only with our lips and not with our hearts. We harbor resentment. We think evil thoughts. We even speak malicious words and act in ways that hurt and harm. In your great mercy, 
forgive our sins and cleanse our hearts and minds. Help us to see the world through the eyes of Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. And hear the good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. And let us pray. O oh God, through suffering and rejection, you bring forth our salvation. And by the glory of the cross, you transform our lives. Grant that for the sake of the gospel, we may turn from the lure of evil, take up our cross, and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
invite you to be seated. We want to welcome our three-year-olds as they experienced preschool Sunday school for the first time this morning. So I'm going to invite our three-year-olds and their families forward to receive their milestone ministry piece of a prayer pillow with a prayer book. So as I list your family's names, I invite you to come forward and join them. Um, for the most part, I think they're alphabetical order up here by last name. So in case you're wondering where to find your prayer pillow, it also has their name on it. Sutton Alm, Audrey Buzak, Quinn Lawaji, Nora Rickus, Isaac Stevens, Huxley Swanson, Jalen Thomas, and Rowan Vandalinati. I invite you and your families to come forward. Good morning, friends. Yeah, I think Rowan's way at the end. Huxley's so here. Isaac, yours is right next to me. Good morning, Quinn. There you are. Rowan, yours is over there. Go grab it. Can you find it? Yeah, I bet you Audrey's is right over here. Yeah. Oh. If you could have heard them upstairs this morning, it was fantastic. So as we want to welcome these young children to preschool Sunday school, as they start down a new road with their small feet on the walk of faith and times to grow and ask questions, as they learn in the world at school and in faith, their fingerprints will touch each of us. But we too have the privilege of touching their lives each of these children with the marks of faith and mentorship over the years. What a wonderful thing to celebrate today and in the years to come. And we, as parents and godparents and the church family, we have all made promises on behalf of your children who have been splashed with the waters of baptism, those promises spoken on behalf of, those, the, of your young children to bring them to worship, to place in their hands the scriptures, to teach them the Apostles' Creed, the Ten Commandments, and the Lord's Prayer, and to teach them in all kinds of ways. This partnership is not without the church alongside of you and your families. And as we mark this special milestone day, we offer you through the gift of a prayer pillow that has been made especially for you, and a prayer book with many beautiful pictures to enjoy and reminders of when and how to pray with God. And we hope that you will use this pillow every day to rest on when you say your prayers as you snuggle into bed at night or nap time or any other time you need comfort. When you see your prayer pillow, we hope that you also remember that you can talk to God anytime when you are happy and thankful about something, when you're sad or hurt, when you go to bed. So many reasons to talk to God. So let us use a prayer that is actually in your book to lead us back to our seats. So let us pray. Dear God, oh, we can do that, Isaac. One, two, three. Dear God, I'm thankful that I can talk with you in any way, at any time, about anything, no matter how I am feeling. Amen. Thanks for coming up, friends. I know, we want one too. It's okay. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, the 50th chapter. The image of the servant of the Lord is one of notable motifs in the book of Isaiah. Today's reading describes the mission of the servant, whom early Christians associated with Jesus. Like Jesus, the, service does, the servant does not strike back at his detractors, but trusts in God's steadfast love. 
beginning with the fourth verse. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he awakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who who will declare me guilty. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of James, the third chapter. This text used various images to illustrate how damage and hurtful the way we speak to and about others can be. Not only are we to control our speech, but what we say and how we say it are to reflect our faith, beginning with the first verse. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes is speaking is perfect able to keep the whole body in check with the bridle. If we put the bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it will take strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a force is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed amongst our members as a word of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and the sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue a wrestled evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring spring pour forth from the same opening, both flesh and blackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives? or a grapevine figs. No more can salt water yield fresh. Word of God, word of life. Speak to God. I invite you to rise in body or spirit for the singing of the gospel acclamation. Holy Gospel according to Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. This story provides the turning point in Mark's gospel. Peter is the first human being in the narrative to acknowledge Jesus as the Messiah, but he cannot accept that as the Messiah, Jesus will have to suffer. Moreover, Jesus issues a strong challenge to all by connecting discipleship and the cross beginning with the 27th verse. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist and others Elijah and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered Jesus, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. 
Then Jesus began to teach the disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forget their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words and in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. And let us pray. Gracious God, Take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. And take our hearts and set the fire of the Holy Spirit in them. Amen. Sometimes when I have multiple meetings or home visits scheduled in Marshall in a day, I can't make them seamlessly back to back. So my f in the meantime, I often have a little time to do some work remotely in between. My favorite place to do this is the Marshall Lyon County Library. When I was there earlier this week, I had a few thoughts and realizations. For one, it is not the quiet library that I remember from growing up. From sixth grade all the way through undergrad, I worked in the library in some way or another. In high school, my lack of musical talent meant that I always had a study hour because I was not in band nor choir. And during this hour, I worked in the library working circulation and shelving returned items. All of these years, the library was a place where the librarian made sure that those that were there were silent. How many times did I hear the librarian, shh, someone, and a group of students, or a group of students to keep it down or to write out, be silent. When I got to university, the library, even in the early 1990s, was different. Part of the library had this art display area where the circulation desk was located. Another part had space for groups on another level, groups working on projects together to meet up and use materials. And another space was kind of like this annex room to the side where students would sit and study. At the university library, we called these zones. Zone one was where normal conversations were appropriate without having to worry about disturbing others, but they would still have access to all of the resources that they needed. Zone two was where low to medium conversations were appropriate. This area was where there was a bank of computers with a librarian on duty and also where the circulation desk was located. A certain amount of noise could be expected in these areas as people would help with research or would need help checking up materials in and out. Zone three was the annex. Conversations there were to be kept to a minimum, to non-existent, and most of the time when you entered that space, you could have heard a pin drop. It was absolute silence 
as a place to really sit down, dig in, and focus on studying and have your full concentration. Each of these zones had their own purpose. All of this came to mind this week because I'd been thinking about how Jesus is like a librarian in the book of Mark. I know, kind of strange, but hear me out. You see, there are times in this gospel where Jesus commands people to be silent. For example, way back in chapter 1, Jesus rebukes an unclean spirit and says, be silent and come out of him. And only 10 verses later, he, it says, Jesus would not permit the demons to speak. In chapter 3, it says that whenever the clean spirits saw Jesus, they fell down before him and shouted, you are the son of God. But Jesus sternly ordered them not to make him known. Be quiet. Silence. If Jesus was the librarian, this would have been zone three, where conversations were supposed to be kept at a minimum or non-existent. Jesus was like that old school librarian I knew in high school, the librarian standing out to be quiet, a rowdy group of students and pulling out that shh. But my friends, it does not end there with demons and unclean spirits. No, Jesus was also working in zone two of the library as he went about doing his miracles and his crowd work. Jesus once healed a leper and told him as he sent him away, say nothing to anyone. But instead the leper went out and began proclaiming it freely and spreading the word of Jesus so he could no longer go into a town openly. He also said after healing a girl and the crowd that was gathered that no one should know this, this healing that has occurred. Even in last Sunday's gospel reading, there was a deaf Gentile man and Jesus gave him the ability to speak and to hear and he ordered the crowd and especially the man to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. I read that one and say to myself, come on, Jesus, how is someone who has been cured to speak and to hear not be able to share with others? Is he supposed to pretend to continue to not be able to now hear or speak? It was like zone two because people could talk and receive assistance and get the help they needed, but afterwards they were supposed to be quiet, silence. And yet we cannot forget zone one, where people were allowed to gather together to do some group work. Jesus, the librarian, did this kind of group work with his disciples. One such instance comes after our reading from today, not too many verses later, where Jesus and some of his disciples climb a mountain to be by themselves to do some work. And here Jesus transfigures in, uh, into uh, to be completely dazzling white and other prophets began to appear and the disciples are terrified and confused. And so on the way down the mountain, Jesus orders the disciples to tell no one on what they had just seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. And so they kept the matters to themselves. Silence. Another instance in zone three was in today's gospel reading. Group work. Jesus and his disciples are working on who people say that he is. Peter, the spokesperson for the group, says that Jesus is the Messiah, which means the anointed one, Christ, Christos. And afterward, Jesus sternly orders them not to tell anyone about him. And as I kept reading through today's gospel, the silencing of Jesus continues. You see, in that next paragraph, Jesus begins to teach the disciples that the Son of Man must undergo suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and in three days rise again. And then Peter takes Jesus aside 
and tries to play librarian himself. He rebukes Jesus. He reprimands Jesus. He tries to silence him. And in response, Jesus rebukes Peter. Jesus attempts to silence him by calling him Satan and telling him to get behind him. And yet, the silent treatment continues in this reading in the third paragraph. Jesus now has called together the crowd alongside of the disciples and says, if anyone wants to be a follower, let them deny themselves and pick up their cross and follow me. What does take up their cross mean? It means to silence their own desires, to silence their own wants, to silence their own selfishness, and to silence wanting to formulate their own plans that do not include God at the center. And Jesus says, put aside your human things for the divine things. So why the commands of secrecy and silence? It seems there's this two-volume book series on why. You see, all of these instances are either in the insider's volume or the outsider's volume. First, the outsiders were made up of the demons and the recipients of the miracles and the crowds. The demons seemed to know exactly who Jesus was. The one even shouted that Jesus was the Son of God. And another one cried out that Jesus was the Holy One of God. And yet another one forbidden to speak because they knew him. Apparently, as demonic beings, they might have insight into who Jesus really is. The Divine One from God. At this point in his ministry, I think that Jesus either did not yet want that message to uh, uh, be made known, or that Jesus did not want demons to be the one to reveal it. The other outsiders were commanded to keep silent for what I believe were a couple of reasons. It was either because Jesus was attempting to prolong his ability to travel due to those increasing amount of people following him, or that he might have been trying to mitigate the spread of incorrect information about him. Think about it. How many times was Jesus thought to be John the Baptist or Elijah or Moses or other prophets? In other words, it seems like Jesus is either trying to keep his identity of who he is and is not until the time has arrived for his big reveal. Those were the outsiders. But what about those insiders? The disciples. Remember about how even in today's gospel reading that Peter tells Jesus who he is, the Messiah, and yet they do not yet completely understand what it actually means. The problem is that the insiders do not seem to fully get it. Commentator Greg Lanier writes it in this way. Jesus commands them to be silent because they, despite their plain self-revealing, still struggle with incomprehension. For insiders, the secrecy motif highlights not how Jesus kept, keeps his identity a secret, but rather how they have failed to grasp what he has revealed to them. It is not Jesus who is concealing the truth, but their own hearts. In a sense, they are holding on to their own desires, their own wants, their own selfishness, and wanting to formulate their own plans that do not include God at the center, hanging on to those human things. And yet Jesus tells both the outsiders and the insiders on that particular day that they must take up their cross if they wish to follow him. They are asked to silence all of the other stuff, just like we are, in order to fully reveal who Jesus is. The great librarian, the Messiah, the Son of God, the Holy One. Friends, we already know how the story ends, so we are not to be kept silent 
but to shout all of the goodness from the mountaintops and the prairies. And for this, my friends, we give thanks to God. And let us pray. Gracious God, you have called us to take up our crosses and to journey alongside of you. Sometimes we forget that you want us to no longer keep silent, but instead to tell all about your goodness. Your son's journey led to the cross where he was silenced for three days in the tomb. And for this, we are ever grateful because after the cross, you have given us forgiveness and you've given us mercy. And all of God's people said, Amen. invite you to rise in body or spirit and let us declare our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. We pray for the church throughout the world. Form us into communities of forgiveness and grace. Help us to notice where you are calling us into new relationships and give us courage to embrace the uncomfortable and unfamiliar. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the earth and all its inhabitants where fire brings destruction 
raise up new growth. Instill within our reverence up for the earth as your creation. Prosper the ending days of growth and preparations for harvest time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who govern nations, tribes, and cities. Open them to the cries of people in need. Direct them in shape and policies that prioritize the health and well-being of all who struggle with hunger and housing insecurity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for this congregation, for those who prepare this space for worship, for ministries of fellowship and hospitality, for learning and teaching, for caretaking and leading, for all those who are able to join us in person, for those who watch online or we visit in their own places of home. Bring all of, to places of connection. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who are ill, all who are lonely or anxious, addicted or struggling, mentally or physically. Draw them close to you and soothe them with the promise of your enduring love. Surround those we know by name and those in our hearts. For Marcy and Joy, for Pastor Dan and I own, for Brad and Barb, for Terry and Tiffany, for Holly and Lyle, for Luther and Jill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. prayer. We remember our beloved dead, especially Carolyn Whitty and Marion Nab, who with the great cloud of witness bear witness to your saving grace. Accompany us in your pilgrimages of faith that we too place our hope and trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our hear prayer. prayer. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. And all God's people boldly exclaim, Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you. Please share a sign of God's peace with those around you. A few community announcements to lift up this morning. All of these are printed in the back of your bulletin, which we hope you will read more in-depthly. Um, the first is that this is the third Sunday of the month, which means that it is the ELCA World Hunger Sunday. Um, there's a great article written in there to inspire us to care for others across the globe. Um, there are also special envelopes at the back of the sanctuary on the table, if that is where your heart is being tugged this day. That article is on page 10 in the back of the bulletin. Also, in a couple of weeks, the Women of the ELCA um, Prairie Conference invitation has been made for their uh, fall uh, conference gathering at Grace First Parish in Russell. Um, and there I will have the opportunity to share more about my Holy Land experience, uh, a soulful uh, pilgrimage. And for those of you that are not able to make it or not part of the women part of things, um, early after the first of the year, I will also share um, that uh, with our congregation and the community here as well. There is a financial snapshot on page 11. Um, we are at the end of summer time frame. We're still lagging a little bit behind as summer um, often happens here. We invite you to be generous and to give as you um, are able. We thank you for your generosity and the ways that you give to this uh, place so that we can be ministry uh, to others. The ushers will now receive the Lord's offering.
body or spirit. Let us pray, merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, you have filled all creation with light and life. The heavens and the earth are full of your glory. Through the ages of time, you have spoken and renewed your promise to every generation. And in sending your Son, you have revealed your kingdom and proclaimed your power. So we give thanks to you, O Lord, for the salvation which you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Lord with the living faith as he comes to us in this Holy Supper. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all of the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to, to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And let us pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come, here is your God, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. I invite you to be seated and the ushers will direct you forward for continuous communion. Blood. 
blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Your gift of love we crucified, we laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king we named a fraud and sacrificed the Lamb. Let a mortal flesh keep silence and with fear and trembling stand. Ponder nothing earthly minded, for with blessing in his hand, Christ our good to earth descends. the communion blessing. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
and receive the sending blessing. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is sending you. Thanks Thanks be to be God. To God.